What's the biggest misconception of you? What's one thing people think about you, but it's not true? Um, that I'm really just like slow. <laughs> it might sound funny, but when people look at like handicaps or disabled people, they just automatically think that it's something wrong in your head or that they are not fully there. But in most cases, some people might just be physically disabled and other people do really be mentally disabled. But on my case, I'm not mentally disabled. I'm really there on the head. But that's really it, man. So just physical? Yeah, physical. That's all it's physical. Everything is in the head. I'm good in the head. Like, I'm very, very intelligent. Shit, I graduated high school. Shit, so most people couldn't do that. Now, as far as physical disablement, yeah. uh, what category or subcategory would you be considered? Um, most people would say midget. Most people would say dwarf. But I would really just classify, I really classify myself as just being a handicap because I have other really like features that midgets and doors have and I don't have. Like I just have missing parts. That's really it. So I wouldn't even consider myself as a dwarf or a midget. But other people don't see that. <laughs> when you say missing parts, what do you mean by that? Um. I was born with no knees and a missing femur, part of my femur. So that was makes me short as an individual. I'm three five. Um, that's really it, man. Mm -hmm. I I could really show y'all, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this physical disablement. Yeah. Um, is that something that's genetic? Is that something that runs in your family, or um, is this a one? Uh, like a rare case? It's really like a rare case, more likely, because there's no one in my family. You meet my mom, you meet my grandma, they are regular people. It just so happened that I was dealt with this, and I'm really premature. I came out way earlier than I was supposed to, but thank God that I'm still here and healthy. How premature was your birth? Um, I was born August 10th, 1997. And I think I was supposed to be due at the end of September. Mm. So, When you were born, was there a chance you wouldn't be able to survive? Yeah, um, the doctors told my family that I wasn't supposed to make it past seven. So you're here, I'm 21 years old, I'm gonna be 22 this year. So yeah, that's, that's what it was. What would happen at seven years old exactly? What would stop you from continuing to live? Um, because of the fact of probably my organisms was probably small and shit, mm. or me not like be able to do what an average person do. But, um, cause my mom was very sick as an individual to begin with. So they was probably worried about me be having diabetic, a bad heart, et cetera. But um, luckily that I was, I pulled through and I was able to learn how to manage on my own, so. And uh, when you, when you walk without a, uh having a femur or knees, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Um, basically, I'm just wobbling like a little penguin. Um, that's really it, man. Um, it's basically like I'm walking like on the sideways type shit. But um, that's really it. It's, I walk like everybody else. <laughs> crutches? Yeah, I use crutches a lot. Um, they help me walk faster, like get places a little bit faster. But if I'm around the house, I don't use my crutches, basically. Ever use a wheelchair? Um, nope. No wheelchair. I used a stroll, like a stroller, as an infant, but that was really it. When I learned how to like manage on my own and learn how to walk, really, I was really good. And I was about the age of six, seven. I know sometimes when people uh, they break their leg, yeah, they have to use crutches. If they've never used crutches before, that's a tough task yeah, for it, some people. It is. <laughs> it, it, they build like what calluses on their hands, yeah. and uh, it's just. I got a few calluses in my hands, but I've been walking with crutches since I was probably like six, seven, eight. So it's been a long ass time since I, I'm very equipped to it. So. And then also too, somebody using them for the first time, if they're not doing it right, they like can pinch your ribs. Yeah, yeah. And that sort of thing. But the thing about my crutches is, um, usually crutches when people get hurt, they got um, like underarm crutches. I have forearm crutches. Mm. So usually I'm walking like this. So. Everything like right here is in like place. 
So I'm really like just walking like this, basically. <laughs> now, no femurs in both legs? Yeah. Okay, and no knees yep. in both legs. So basically straight shin. Now, have you ever, uh, have you ever uh, um, inquired about the possibility of them doing something aside? Crutches or that sort of thing? Yeah, it ran through my head about when I was younger, but I just learned that it wasn't worth the pain and the time to do all that. Because before, like right now I'm healthy, but growing up I had 19 plus surgeries over mm -hmm. time. And this is from infant to about age of 13, 14. So over time it's just, I wasn't really, I was done with the pain. I was like, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm straight with my body. Like, it's some shit that y'all can't fix. And no matter how much technology good or how people think it is, same thing you just can't fix. So I just learned how to accept with my body and deal with that. <laughs> 19 surgeries is a lot. Yeah, actually 19 plus. So it's probably like 23, 24. I mean, 19 I can remember. Uh, what did these surgeries consist of exactly? Um, main on my right foot, cause I have a club foot. So basically my foot is like sideways type shit. Mm. It's like I'm walking on my side of my foot. Um, I had, they tried to fix that all growing up cause they wanted to make my foot as flat as possible. But then my bone just wasn't crop, crop, acting right. Mm. <laughs> so, um, that, then um, I had hella surgeries going like, and right here and shit, got hella scars. If I could show y'all, I could show y'all really, to be honest with you. Um, hella shit. Um, right here, I cut open as a kid, as an infant. Um, right here, I had a trait from right here to right here so I could eat and feed and shit. Um, that's constant, a whole lot of surgeries. And then I had surgeries on my legs and shit. I had a metal rod in my leg, keep my my legs straight, um, basically. And that was really it, man. <laughs> Do you need any further surgeries on your body at um, this point, moving forward? Most likely, I I'm probably will, but I'm not gonna probably take it because it's like I'm just done with that. It's just same shit. Like I said, same shit could fits. Mm -hmm. So. Moving forward, I'm just satisfied with my body, but if something happens and something I need to get surgery on, of course I'm gonna have to do it, because I must help me have to. Mm. But other than that, I'm good right now. But as far as your organs, mm -hmm. they're fine? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, not pre-diabetic or anything no. like that? My mom was um, diabetic, she was, she was diagnosed as diabetic at the age of seven. So that's when they checked around there when I was about seven, eight. I see. But I pulled through, I'm Gucci. <laughs> you also, uh, in the beginning of this segment, you used the term, uh, of course, dwarf, but you also used the word midget. Yeah. Uh, today in society, American society, uh, that's not a politically correct term. Yeah. Uh, they've tried to outdo that term. Yeah, as, uh, it's considered a negative term at this point. But that's what people still say. People will still say, oh, yeah, that's a midget, or oh, yeah, that's a dwarf. So at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not, I can't be mad at somebody saying that because it's what they know and that's what they grew up to know. Mm. So it's just, I have to accept that. But that's what most people might say I am if they never met me or never know my story. They'll be like, oh, yeah, he's a midget. Oh yeah, well, he's a door. But you don't take offense to it? No, I don't take offense to it, cause it's like, they just don't know. They, they don't know who I am, they don't know my situation. So I can't really get mad at somebody that's just ignorant and just don't know any better. Do you ever try to correct or you just- Yeah, of course, I tell people, I talk about it. Like, I'll, if anybody got questions, I'll answer it. Like, people are so nervous to ask questions. And it's like, I know y'all want to know more. I know y'all want to know more about me. So that's, I'm open, I'm, I'm here for it. Because <laughs> certain people might not be like that. Now what about rumors? Yeah. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Um, 
That's a good question. Um, craziest rumor that I heard about myself. Um, probably. That's a good question because we don't really get rumors on like that. We would just talk shit. <laughs> but my biggest rumor is that, um, I don't know. That's a good question. Really, shit. I'm trying to think on that. <laughs> Maybe you don't have any. I really don't. Like, I'm telling you, people just talk shit. That's really it. But I don't even have no rumors because people really don't know about my life. Like, people, they see what on Instagram, but they don't know me personally. They don't, like, know what the fuck I'm doing besides, like, outside of Instagram. So I really don't have no rumors. When it comes to questions, and you 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 mentioned, uh, hey, go ahead and ask. You feel free to ask you questions. You don't mind answering them. Is there a question though you hate to answer? Is there something you just can't stand that people do ask when they ask? Um, well, I don't, I, people be like, "Why are you so small? Or what's wrong with you? Or what's your disease?" So it's like. It's not a disease, like I'm not sick or nothing. Like I'm just disabled. That's all. Um, but that's really the main questions, really. But then that, I just really just let roll off the head. Just nothing. I heard anything. I heard everything in the book. To be honest with you. <laughs> mm. So. Do you care what people think of you? Yeah, no, I'm the cool shit, man. Trust me. I made it 21. <laughs> I'm more confident than anybody that I know. So I would just trust me, I get a whole lot of negativity on a daily basis. But then none of that shit fades me because at the end of the day, it's like they not living my shoes. They're not walking my um feet. So and at the end of the day I know they'll fold if they was in my shoes. Like people would never come out and do what I'm doing. Mm. Like, simple as that. Now, are you honest when you say that? Yeah, you don't care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Have you always been like that? Or was there a time when you did care about other people's opinions of you? It was when I was younger because growing up, I was like, damn, why me? Why am I the reason why? Why am I set with this? Why do I have to be small? Why I can't grow and shit like that? But at the end of the day, it was like, I had to realize it is what it is. I can't, nothing's gonna get better. So at the time it, it was, but then I just, People that I had around me was like, bro, you don't, you don't have, you good. You don't have to worry about anybody, what anybody has to say. Because at the end of the day, you true to yourself. If you were, if they was in your shoes, they wouldn't even last as long as you did. So I really don't care. I swear, man. Because it's like, I heard it all, bro. I heard it all. When do you think this turning point was in your life? Are you able to pinpoint maybe what age or what grade maybe when you... Probably when I was in high school, when I was a freshman. Because all through middle school, I was that cool kid. I was everybody realized who I was. But when I got to high school, that's when I was like with the older kids. Like, because I was always that popular kid, no matter what. I went to two high schools down here. Mm. Um, I was always that, that guy in school because of just me being disabled and being having my personality that I had. Mm. So basically, I really had to realize, like, damn, motherfuckers is really out here, don't care, they're selfish. Like, not selfish, but rude and really hitting them. So just, I just really grow up and adapt to this shit, <laughs> to be honest. Everybody, words really just don't hurt, because at the end of the day, nobody don't do nothing. Everybody just don't talk. And when you say you went to to high school around here, you're talking about Atlanta? Yeah. Actually, Mary Yellow, really. Mary Yellow and Swanner. Shout out to Mary Yellow. Shout out to Will. <laughs> now, when it came to caring about yeah. opinions of others and, and that point of your life, when you did, obviously, when people care about another person's opinion of them, it can lead to health issues. Yeah. It, it, it can lead to depression, it can lead to suicide thoughts, all that shit. But growing up, I had a mother that always told me, you just, you better than that, you stronger than that. Like, don't ever let these kids, don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Like, and that's what was just stoned into my head as a growing up. So, yeah, that's why I keep saying, a hell of people won't last in my shoes because saying shit that you have to accept. Like, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna really just, let somebody just throw me off my move. 
mm. because of the fact of he's not help, happy with his life. Like, I'm good with mine. <laughs> you see where I'm at? So I'm not really stressing. Also, it can lead to anxiety and certain levels of stress as well. Uh, did it ever get that bad, though? I mean, there were times where you questioned why and this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. But did it ever get to the point of suicidal thoughts at one point of your life? Um, to be honest, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I have probably once at the all time. But mm -hmm. it was like, I just knew I was better than that. Like, it wasn't worth any of my life. Because I knew I was some going to be something bigger than what I thought I was going to be. But, yeah. But at the end of the day, I just had to learn how to be like, yo, this is not what it is. This is not the real way to go. When you did have these thoughts or, you know, question why and that sort of thing, when it came to uh, counseling, mm -hmm. therapy, medication, stuff like that, did you ever seek any of that? Only medication I took was man one. And when you and, and when you say marijuana, that was self medicating with this type of stuff, or you just? I just took it man. It was because everything was like I asked her, that was my only gateway because of the fact that it threw me. It really made me like not worry about a lot of shit. Because mm. like, at the end of the day, trust me, I take a whole lot of negativity, man. Like more than people think I take. It's just to be stupid, and it'd be like, damn, why people think about this shit like this? Why I don't even know? So it's just that way, just help me throw me off, then don't have to think about that shit. So really, that's it. I'm like medication, like counseling, I ain't do none of that shit. I'm, I don't need none of that because I know I'm struggling mentally with that. Mm. I don't need nobody telling me what to, what I need to do with my life or how to think of, or how to think. Period. I know how to think. I'm good. As long as I'm not really. Depressed and suicidal, I'm straight. And I haven't been like that in a long ass time. How young did the marijuana smoking start? Man, shit, probably like 14. <laughs> oh, okay. Seventh grade, seven. And uh, we'll talk about that in another, uh, another conversation, but <laughs> just curious. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, what about when it comes to, uh, you know, the viral stuff, the skits, and that world? Uh, do you care about people's opinions of that, of your skits, of making yeah. making people laugh, the comedy stuff, the entertaining stuff? Well, so far, man, I've been getting so much positivity with that because it's like everybody's like really inspired by me because they was like, oh, he has this confidence, he could do this, he could do that, and he's not even that. His disability really stopped ruining. So it's really like everybody's pushing for me. Everybody's really on my hand. So it's just like people that I grew up with, they were like, they never really expected to come up, but they knew I was going to do something. Because I was just that, I was different. I was that type of person. Like, I was, my personality was just great. But, like, with the, I don't really get, like, too bad, too much bad energy when it comes to the skits. Like, everybody's pushing for me. Everybody loves me. Everybody want me to do these. Trust me, I got people still waiting on skits. <laughs> but, yeah, I still have an everyday life. <laughs> what are your keys to success? Um, just staying down, to be honest with you, man. Staying down. Like, really just working and just waiting for your time. You'll be so eager to do this, to do that. But really, you just got to wait that time. Everybody's time comes. And that's really all I say. Just continue to work for your dreams. You rap, you rap. You want to be like, be an actor, act, or you want to play sports, go ahead and do what you got to do. Just continue to do it. Don't ever give up. Don't ever really think that you can't do it. And don't let what these motherfuckers tell you that you can't do it. Because at the end of the day, they mad because you're doing it and they are not. Simple as that. And that's how my, really my motivation for everybody else. Shit, I did it. Why can't you?